Hi, I'm Greg Marcus. I'm the pastor of Imperial Valley Christian Center. This is our Sunday morning service via the internet. And thank you for being with us. We hope this is helping you to grow and helping you to develop in the things of God. We're not just supposed to, you know, be born again. We're not just supposed to become Christians. We're not just supposed to be baptized and just hang out until we die. No, we're supposed to grow. We're supposed to develop. We're supposed to increase. We're supposed to look more like Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's what we're doing here. That's our mission. That's our assignment is to produce little Jesuses. And we hope you're receiving that. Anyway, right now I want to deal with this subject. The three parts of faith. The three parts of faith. So let's start at Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Have faith in God, or as I've been reading it, have God's faith. That's the literal translation. Have God's faith faith, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes, hallelujah, believes in their heart, we've been saying, believes in their heart, believes what? That what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says, have God's faith, Jesus answered, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes in their heart, believes what? That what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just hearing that should excite us. If it's real to us, it should excite us. If it's real to you, it should excite you. The reason it excites me is because I know it's real. I know it's the truth. I know it's knowledge. I have knowledge of this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. But believes that believes what? Believes in their heart, believes what? That what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I I mentioned to you that, or I explained to you that I've been meditating on this for a long time back in in the early 2000s, 2000, 2001, and I, I really kind of became obsessed with meditating on this scripture. And, and I saw, I heard a story of Papa Hagen's about when he was a boy and he had been born prematurely back in the 19-teens, I guess. And so they didn't have all this stuff and they thought he was dead, but he actually turned out he was, when he was born, they thought he was dead and, and it turned out he was alive. But, you know, he was premature and as a result of being born premature, he had all these different ailments and sicknesses and malfunctioning parts and all that kind of stuff. So he knew if there was going to be any hope for him, it was going to be in the Bible. And so he began studying the Bible and reading. He started reading in the Gospels. He thought since he didn't have a lot of time left, that'd be a good place to start. And he got over here to Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Have God's faith, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but uh, leaves in their heart that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, verse 24, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And he said somehow down in his spirit, he knew that this was the answer. And so he had asked uh, the uh, his uh, parents to ask the pastor to come and that pastor never even came. And then they asked another pastor to come And that pastor never even came. And finally, his aunt, I think it was, invited, uh, said, oh, my pastor will come see you. And she she was a Methodist. And the Methodist pastor came. He wants to ask him, is it true? Is it true? And, you know, he's struggling, trying to get it out, trying to get the pastor to understand, is Mark 11, 23 true? Is this thing that Jesus said really true? Truly have God's faith, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in heart in their heart, but believes that what, but does not doubt in their heart, but believes in their heart, believes what? That what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Hallelujah. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. He's trying to ask them, is there? <laughs> he can't get the words out clearly, but he said it. His, you know, his family they could make out what he was saying, but this pastor 
you know, sat there for a few moments and then said the thing, you know, oh, don't worry, my boy, it'll all soon be over. And then they began the preparations for the funeral. The funeral, <laughs> well, he wasn't interested in that. And after that event, he said he became really upset and he wanted to throw his Bible across the room, you know, and, and say, well, forget this stuff. And he, he had been reading it, you know, and, and spending time with God. And now he said, forget it. And finally, after some time, he picked it back up and started reading it. And he came back to this verse and he said, hallelujah. He knew somehow that the, the only thing that was going to help him was this verse, that this verse would help him. You know, he had in his churches where he grew up, they talked about healing had passed away and all this kind of stuff. But he'd never heard anyone say that prayer had passed away and here Jesus is saying therefore I tell you what whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have re Woo wouldn't it be great if God would answer our prayers hallelujah well he will according to Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I'm getting to the point here hallelujah hallelujah but anyway so he began studying again again and he, this is the part I want you to see. He said, I heard him say this one time, and it was, I'd never gotten this part of the story. I'd never really sort of uh, heard this part of the story, I guess I would say. And he, he said that he spent, I think it was five or six months meditating on this scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, just meditating on it, meditating on it, medit trying to figure out, I guess trying to figure out how to do this believing stuff or what it was he was supposed to believe or what he was supposed to do to receive his prayers answered. Hallelujah. And what I want you to see is he, he didn't meditate on it for five seconds. He didn't meditate it. You know, the, we want to treat the things of God like we treat everything else in life. You know, we want to go on a diet and we wanted to, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I'm trying to lose weight and I would like to be able to lose weight like in five minutes. I have enough stick to activeness. <laughs> I have enough, uh, you know, gumption. <laughs> I have enough diligence. I have enough discipline. Yes, that's the word. I have enough discipline to stick with this losing weight program or this exercise program or this learn a language program or this read these books program. I have enough discipline to stick with that for five minutes. Or, you know, sometimes I'll even go for five whole days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, you know, just like that, you won't get any results from your diet or exercise program or from your educational program or from your uh, uh, learn a language program if you just work on it for five days. If you could, we'd all be wonders, you know. <laughs> we'd all be awesome. Hallelujah. Can you see that? No, but it takes discipline. It takes diligence uh, to achieve these things. And it's the same thing with the things of God. Hallelujah. You know, you could start off the beginning. Oh, I'm going to really study the Bible this year. I'm going to read, you know, a book of the Bible every day. Well, you know, that's probably a little bit much. That's good. That's probably not going to work. Hallelujah. Read a chapter every day. <laughs> that's something that's doable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But all I want you to see is that so he took these six months of meditating on this and meditating on this and meditating trying to figure out well, how do I get healed yes I I'm pretty sure the answer is in this scripture somewhere but how do I how do I do it how do I receive this he, this healing hallelujah 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 and I think it was um, on verse 24 huh, and it said this is believe that you receive them and you shall have them Believe that you receive them and you shall. And he suddenly realized, wait a second. I have to believe that I have them. Hallelujah. Believe that you receive them and it will be yours. It says here in the NIV. He was reading from the King James Bible. But, you know, it's basically the same thing, just modern or more modern language. It says, 
Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And it suddenly occurred to him, wait a second, I have to believe. He suddenly saw, he finally saw after this meditation, I have to believe Believe that you receive. I have to believe that I have received them. Well, I'm sick, and then I will have them. I have to believe that I receive, and then I will have them. Hallelujah. Most of us are trying to figure out how to receive them. Can you see that? Hallelujah. But he saw, I have to believe that I received healing while I'm still laying here on the bed, sick, unable to get out of bed, paralyzed with all these different physical ailments, I have to believe that I received healing while all that's going on. And then Jesus says, and then I will have them. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, whatever you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. Believe that you receive it. And so he said, oh, I'm supposed to believe all this time, he had been trying to get healed, trying to, but he said he instantly changed and he was believing. Hallelujah. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I believe, and he began to give glory to God. He began to, oh, thank you, Father, I'm healed. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And while he's saying, thank you, Father, I'm healed, he said a voice spoke up to him in his spirit. He just heard this in his spirit, not, you know, out here in, in the world, you know, but in his spirit, he heard a voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit saying to him, well, Healed people shouldn't be in bed at this time, should they? Healed people shouldn't be in bed at this time. And so he saw, oh, wait, I should, if I believe I'm healed, I should act on that. And he started, he couldn't walk. So he grabbed onto the bedpost and pulled himself up. He said, you know, whatever, he'd been in bed all this time, everything, he was so dizzy and low blood pressure and whatever, everything started, the room started spinning, the room started spinning, the room, hallelujah, but he finally, he managed to pull himself up, hallelujah, 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 and he was healed, hallelujah, 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 but the part I want you to focus on, or the part I want you to see, the part I want you to understand is that it took him six months of meditating on these scriptures before the light came. That's one of Papa Hagen's scriptures he loved to say. The entrance of his word giveth light. Hallelujah. 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 When the light comes, Papa Hagen would say, when the light comes, faith is there. When the light comes, faith is there. How did the light come? By meditating on that scriptures for six months. Hallelujah. So I said all that to say this. I start. I heard Papa Hagen, and so I thought, oh, well, that must be, I'd never heard that six months thing or five months, whatever it was, this long period of meditating in the Word. I'd never heard that part of the story before. But when I heard that, I thought, well, I guess that must be what you have to do. And so I started off on this uh, time of meditating myself in Mark chapter eleven twenty three, And as I did it more, I could see that it was affecting me, it was affecting me in my heart. And so I, you know, leaned into it, as they say, you know, I pressed into it and I kept doing it until I became upset. I just said, uh, I, you know, I was doing it from the King James Bible. I'm reading it here from the NIV just because it's a little clearer. 
Have God's faith, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes in their heart, believes what? That what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Go throw yourself into the sea and does, truly I say to you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes in their heart, believes what? That what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes in their heart, believes what? That what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes in their heart that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Well, why was I meditating? Well, I was trying to figure out how to believe. I could see from this thing, from this Mark eleven twenty three, 23, that the key to speaking to the mountain and moving it, and I wanted to be able to speak to the mountain. I had mountains in my life that needed to be moved, you know, mountains of finances or mountains of healing or mountains of prayers or mountains of, of just material success in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, not even spiritual things is what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. I had these mountains. I wanted to be, be, to be moved in my life. And I could see that the key to moving the mountain was believing. And so I wanted to know how to believe. That's why I'm meditating. He was meditating to get healing. I'm meditating just to figure out what it means to believe. Hallelujah. 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 And so I'm meditating, meditating, you know, morning, night, middle of the night, you know, I became, so I'm driving my car, just going to whoever shall say unto this mouth, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have life. over and over and over and over and over. And one day I was just, sometimes I just meditate on, on little pieces of it. Believe that what they say will happen shall not doubt in their heart, but believe in their heart. Believe what? That what they say will happen. Believe in their heart. Believe what? That what they say will happen. Believe in their heart. Believe what? That what they say will happen. Believe in their heart. Believe what? That what they say will happen. Believe in their heart. Believe what? That what they say will happen. And one day I was meditating on that little piece, and all of a sudden, the light came. Hallelujah. The entrance of his word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. The entrance of his word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. And all of a sudden, I knew what it meant to believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the first thing I saw was this. Now I'm talking about the three parts of faith because after that, I began to understand it better. But the first thing I saw was this was faith is knowing something in your heart. Faith is perceiving something in your spirit. Faith is seeing something with the eyes of your spirit. When Jesus talks about believe, believe what? That those things which he says shall come to pass? What did he say? What was his example? Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. When Jesus talks about that, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, what he means by believe is know in your heart that when you speak those words, the mountain will be cast into the sea. When Jesus says believe, believe what? That those things which he says shall come to pass, that's what he means. He know, know in your heart, perceive in your heart, hallelujah, per, I would put it this way, Perceive, see with the eyes of your spirit. Real faith is equivalent to seeing physically. Bible faith is the equivalent of seeing something with your physical eyes. Bible believing, the, the believing Jesus is talking about here, hallelujah, is equivalent, hallelujah, of seeing something with your physical eyes, hallelujah. When you see something with, if all of a sudden a fire burst out here in my house and you know, there's flames 
raging and all that. Do I have to work up some kind of belief in these flames and these fires to know that the house is on fire? Hallelujah. No, the minute I see it, I know it. Hallelujah. Faith is like that. The minute I see it, I know it. How faith is like that. The minute I see it, I believe it. Hallelujah. Can you see that? So I act. I move to get out of the house or get the kids out of the house or whatever. Hallelujah. Can you see that? Faith, believing that the Bible is talking about, is equivalent, hallelujah, to seeing with your eyes. Can you see that? So that's why the Apostle Paul can say, we walk by faith, not by sight. In other words, when we walk in this life, we're walking, when you walk in real life, hallelujah, assuming your eyes are all functioning normally, how do you walk? With your eyes, you know, you look and you walk and you uh, see stuff on the ground, you step over it, you see that there's you know, a step there, you step onto it, hallelujah, that's how you walk in real life. How do we walk? It's equivalent to that. Only we're not seeing with these physical eyes, we're seeing with the eyes of our spirit, hallelujah, and when we walk according to what the eyes of our spirit are letting us know, we call that faith. So the Apostle Paul can say we walk by faith. We walk. We conduct our life based on what we see with the eyes of our spirit. We conduct our life based on what we see with the eyes of our spirit. That's what Christians are supposed to be doing. That's what Christianity is all about, about believing, about living a life of faith, about living a life guided by the eyes of your spirit, about living a life guided by the ears of your spirit, about living a life guided by the mind of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Does that mean? So what I saw was faith is, faith is knowing something in your heart. That's the way I put it. Oh, when Jesus says believe, believe what? That those things which he says shall come, he means know in your heart. Know it, perceive with the eyes, hear with the ear. Know in your heart that those things which you say will come to pass. He means know in your spirit that those things which you say will come to pass. That's what Jesus means by believing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I never heard it taught that way. I'm not even saying nobody had ever taught it that way. I'm just saying I'd never heard it. And it seemed new to me. And whenever I read something in the Bible, or I get some insight from the Bible, and I've never heard anybody else say it, or anybody that I have confidence in say it, I check it out. I need to find it in the Bible. Is that in the Bible? And so I spent some time, I mean, I spent a lot of time studying the Bible to see, is, is that really in the Bible? Is it really in the Bible that believing is knowing? Is that what Jesus, does it, I'm new here in my heart. I knew, when Jesus says believe, he means know in your spirit. That I knew, hallelujah. I knew that, but what I want to know is, am I missing it? I mean, I can miss it. I don't know about you guys. Some of you guys are so confident about things. <laughs> I'm amazed sometimes. I mean, there are people who go around talking about the book of Revelation like it's a newspaper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're packing up their bags, getting ready to go. Hallelujah. I wish I could be that confident about things. I read the book of Revelation and I think, oh, that's kind of interesting. I'm one of those guys, like they say, I read, I read the book of Revelation, hallelujah, just because it says you'll be blessed if you read the book of Revelation, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I, I'm not like those people that, you know, they come up with some theory of, of, of uh, uh, what do they call that, you know, uh, prophecy, some prophetic ideas, some prophetic theory, some prophetic thing they dreamed up in their head, some prophetic thing that they put together this puzzle in their head, and they go around telling it like it's so. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm here to, you want, you want to know what Greg said? Jesus ain't coming tomorrow. Hallelujah. If Jesus was coming tomorrow, I would know. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. 
He says he'll let us know. Hallelujah. Not because we figured out some some, uh, arcane secret interpretation of the scriptures where Russia is Gog and and -and so-and-so is Magog and Israel is Ugog and whatever all those Gogs are that everybody's always talking about. But he'll let us know in our spirit. Hallelujah. We have the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul says we have the mind of Christ. You think Christ isn't knowing when he's coming back? What? We're coming back today? Well, I wish somebody... Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyway, my point is this. Here's my point. I knew in my heart. I had a revelation from God. I had illumination, whatever you want to call it. The eyes of my understanding had been enlightened as to what it means to believe. And yet, even so, I never talked about it. I never taught that until I found in the Bible, in the scriptures, these things written by people that we know knew God. Things that Jesus said. Things that the apostle John said. Do you think they knew God better than you? Yes, they did. Now go ahead. Hallelujah. So if they didn't come up with that theory, guess what? You shouldn't be coming up with that theory. That was my idea. So I got to find it in the Bible. And the first thing I found was, was, turn over to uh, the gospel of John chapter 17. Let's look at this. All all I want you to see is this. This is the point. And stay focused on this part. Does the Bible teach? I, I believed that when I was meditating, the Holy Spirit showed me that when Jesus says believe, he means to know something in your spirit. That when Jesus says believe, he means to see something with your spiritual eyes. That when the Bible talks about faith, It means perceive something, hallelujah, with your spirit, hallelujah. What I believed was that when the Bible said faith or believe, it meant know something in your spirit. I was familiar with knowing something in my spirit, hallelujah. That what I realized later was the one of the main reasons uh, Papa Hagen talked about being led by the Spirit, hallelujah, is so that we could tune into that same faith thing. Hallelujah. Faith comes from your spirit. Faith is knowing in your spirit. He teach a lot about being led by. One of the main reasons that Papa Hagen talked about walking in love, hallelujah, Because you have to walk in love from your spirit. There are people, Christians, you know, forget about sinners. I'm not interested in what sinners do. Sinners will sin. People who are not walking in the spirit will, amazingly enough, not walk in the spirit. I don't care about that. I care about Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit, who have the Holy Spirit indwelling them, walking according to the flesh, not walking according to the Spirit. Hallelujah. So Papa Hagen would teach on love. Why? So we'd learn to listen to our spirit when it came to other people. Hallelujah. Does that make sense to you? If you can't walk in love, you cannot walk by faith. If you cannot walk in love, you cannot walk by faith. If you cannot walk in love, you cannot walk by faith. If you cannot walk in love, you cannot walk by faith. If you cannot walk in love, you cannot walk by faith. Watch, turn over to, let me see here, Romans chapter, look here in Romans chapter 13. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 13, starting at verse 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. Listen to this. This is the part that's important here. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. Whatever other command there may be. Whatever other command there may be, whatever other command, you know, people say, get obsessed 
with with the command and the commandments and and the law and telling people what they should do and what they shouldn't do and tell ah you sinner hallelujah 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 this is but look here he sums up all the commands you shall not covet and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command love your neighbor as yourself 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 love it don't be like those religious nuts who say well but that person ain't my neighbor hallelujah can you see what they're trying to do they're trying to avoid walking in love hallelujah and when they try to avoid walking in love what are they doing they're avoiding walking in the spirit Listen to me, all you people who are obsessed with telling people what's right and what's wrong. What you should be obsessed with is this. Hallelujah. Whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. One time somebody came to Jesus and they said, Master, what is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. Hallelujah. However it goes. And then he said, and the second commandment, the second greatest commandment is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Quit worrying about all the other things. You know, I don't know. These these preachers, they must have saints sitting in their pews that they can they can start talking about all these other things hallelujah did they conquer the thing jesus said is number two on the list have they already conquered number two on the list love thy neighbor as thyself jesus said that was number two until you conquered number two don't move on to number 573 hallelujah Hallelujah, knuckleheads. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says here. This is the Apostle Paul. I assume you mean you a thing or two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> Let me read it from verse 9. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall... Well, let's start at verse 8. Hallelujah. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. Are you loving one another? Oh, no, yeah, 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 I'm letting that debt be remain unpaid. (laughs) I'm not paying. I pay all my debts, just not that one. (laughs) Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Not the one who has the best doctrine. Hallelujah. Not the one who's the king of theology. Not the one who's the king at playing. I can name that heresy in three notes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not the one who's king at play and name that heresy, but who? Who is? Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. Whatever other command you guys are focused on. I mean, whatever other command that you guys are obsessed with, I mean, whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not. Oh, well, that's not really harm. I'm doing them good. I'm doing, I'm helping them. Hallelujah. Is that how you want to be helped? Is that how you want God to help you? Knuckle ahead. Hallelujah. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. You guys going around making yourself lists of things you need to do. Uh, You only need to do this one thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
Love your neighbor as yourself. Listen, what does that mean? Well, yeah, that's not my neighbor. That's what religious people say. You ever talk to fanatical religious nuts? And they're always trying to divide everybody. Oh, yeah, that one's not my neighbor. That one's not my neighbor. Oh, no, that one's too dark-skinned. That one is definitely not my neighbor. Oh, that one's a weirdo. That is not my neighbor. Those two, two women, weirdos. They are not my neighbors. Hallelujah. You see it in, in, in other religions. You see some of these rabbis, you know, this, their whole doctrine. So, well, they're not my neighbor. So they make everybody, they only live in places where other people they like live. So they never, you know, they never have to help anybody they don't like. That's not what he means. Hallelujah. Don't you remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Hallelujah. Jesus told. And somebody came to him, some religious nut came to Jesus and said, well, but master, who is my neighbor? After he had told them, <laughs> the second greatest commandment is just like it, love your neighbor. And so some, some wise acre, some religious nut came to him and said, yeah, but who is my neighbor? Why would anybody even think that? Why would anybody be asking that? Because they want to figure out who they can mess up. Hallelujah. Who's it acceptable to mess up? Because I'm in a messing up mood. Nobody. It's not acceptable to mess up anybody. And Jesus said to him, there was, a, there was a, a man who was walking down the path to wherever it was, Jericho, and he was beset by thieves. And the thieves robbed him, beat him up, took all his stuff, left him for dead naked on the side of the road. Hallelujah. And some religious nut came walking by and saw that guy and he crossed the street. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, he may make me unclean. I got to go over there. Hallelujah. 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 Some Christian pastor came walking by and saw him laying there naked on the street, beaten up by the thieves. And he said to himself, well, that guy should have made better life choices. Hallelujah. You knucklehead. You better start making better life choices. Hallelujah. And that ain't one of them. Hallelujah. Finally, a Samaritan came by, Jesus said. You know what a Samaritan, that was like if we said, finally some Hindu came walking by. Finally, some Muslim came on. Yeah, the Christian people, they all passed this guy, left him alone. The pastor came by, left the guy on the street. The priest came by, left the guy on the street. The Orthodox priest left that guy naked on the street. And the evangelical pastor, the TV evangelist, they all walked by, left on. And then some Hindu guy came walking by. Some Muslim guys came walking by. Some Buddhist guy came walking by. Hallelujah. And he took the guy and he tended to his wounds and he took him to an inn and he paid for the inn. And he said, whatever else you spend, I'll pay you when I come back this way. Hallelujah. And Jesus said to the knucklehead who wanted to know, who's my neighbor? He said to him, well, which one was a neighbor? Hallelujah. To the man who was beat up and robbed by the thieves. Who was the neighbor? Those people, who was the neighbor? Who was the neighbor to that one? That evangelical pastor walked by. Well, that guy made some bad life choices. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to what the Apostle Paul says. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. Hallelujah. Who's that debt owed to? God. You have a debt to God to love one another. Some, some of you guys, your debt is piled up so bad. They're going to send the people to foreclose on you. Hallelujah. They're going to send the people to take you to the debtor's prison. You guys have so much. Let that not. <laughs> let no debt remain outside. You have so much debt of love piled up. 
Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. There are preachers whose whole focus in ministry, hallelujah, is to tell their people, tell people, to tell so-called Christians, it's okay to not walk in love. It's okay to not walk in love. It's okay. To, that's their whole ministry is rounding up people who want to not walk in love. Hallelujah. The, for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law, the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, whatever other command, if it was me, I would have said, whatever other command you can dream up, <laughs> whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. 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 Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's my point? What's my point? My point is, the one of the reasons, I'm assuming the reason, the main reason Papa Hagen talk, talked about walking in love so much was because you cannot walk by faith if you cannot walk by love. You cannot believe if you cannot walk by love. You cannot walk by faith if you cannot walk by love. You cannot believe the mountain will move if you cannot walk by love. You cannot believe that you receive the thing if you cannot walk by by love. Hallelujah. It's the same department. It's the same spirit. Hallelujah. That same spirit inside of you that says, love your neighbor as yourself. Love doeth no harm to a neighbor. That same spirit is the one that's going to say to you, hallelujah. That same knowing, that same voice, hallelujah, is going to say to you, say to that mountain, move, and it will move. Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus means by believing. Hallelujah. I didn't get to the part where I'm going to show you where I found it in the scriptures. So come back next week. Listen, if you can, please do us the favor of hitting like, subscribe, notification bell. Leave us a good comment. Also, you can go to our website and contribute to keep this ministry going by clicking on the Feed the Ox button. And you'll be able to give a donation through PayPal. We really, really appreciate your support for those of you who have keep keep us going with this teaching ministry. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.